one day, maybe have gone out to dinner, gone to a movie, left the dogs alone in the house and come back and there is blood splattered on the wall, there's multiple puncture wounds, there are scrapes on their face that make them look a little bit like Franken dog. You have hair that's obviously all roughed up and it could be saliva, it could be blood, it could be a mixture of the two. Um, it does happen, it's not uncommon, and there are many triggers for why animals will fight. And it's one of our biggest fears because as a veterinarian, I certainly have to patch up many pets who have been in a tussle. And sometimes it's minor, and unfortunately sometimes it's not quite so minor. As you can see here, if she'll let me get up a little bit closer to her, you can see the, the cuts, you can see where there's some blood on her fur here, and if we open her mouth, you can actually see where she lost a couple of teeth. Here you go, sweetie. And I actually found those teeth on the floor. So, you know, one of our biggest fears when we leave the house or when we have a couple of dogs that may be assertive is that we're going to not just come home to a fight, but we're going to come home to potentially an animal that has perished or has some severe wounds. What are triggers? You know, what are the things that cause animals to fight? There's a lot of them, guys, um, but the main ones are this. Toys, okay? Toys laying out in the, in the, in the floor um, is a big one. People, animals are often possessive of their toys. This right there is a bed. You can see that's where they'll sleep. They'll hoard their toys right there, and they can be quite possessive. Now, normally, uh, this pet, this pup right here, I mean, she shares freely with her housemate, uh, Seamus, who is laying right there, sweet as can be. Um, but, and they get along perfectly well. They can lay on the couch together, they'll share toys together, and there very rarely is any, any evidence of problems. But if you bring other animals, maybe friends, friends' dogs come over to visit, uh, it, that can change. So what's another reason that that could happen? It's often they're territorial. So this is a space that is Skye's space. This is her house. This is her and Seamus' house. And so if we have other dogs come to visit and you've got one assertive female yeah, or you have two assertive females. So Skye is very assertive female. She is not very big, but she has a little bit of that little man syndrome going on and this is her space, and so she protects her space, and unfortunately, uh, the other dog that came to visit uh, was unwilling to back down as well. We don't know who started it, we just simply know this is what we came home to. So another thing that can cause uh, animals to potentially be triggered into fighting is food. So I always put the food away. You know, this was put up on the counter, uh, the dog food bowl, we don't leave food out. I don't feed them together. I always feed them in their kennels because food is a huge trigger for a fight. So I just wanted to, you know, just briefly mention, I don't ever want you to come home to two dogs that have been in a serious fight or potentially one has killed the other. And as a veterinarian, I have seen that. It is not common, but it's really not uncommon. And it's devastating when it happens. So in order to protect everybody if you know you have animals that are potentially going to trigger into a fight over a toy over a bone over food over territory over just sheer dominance then please 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 what i ask is you keep them separate and from now on sky will when we're here at my house and we have others over to visit and we're going to leave the leave the house we're going to put her in her kennel um, Seamus can be left out, but you see here is a nylabone, and nylabone, I mean, it's just a chewy, but it's something that could trigger a fight. We'll try to avoid that, and we'll, we'll always put food away where they cannot get to it so that we don't trigger any kind of fights by way of, you know, inappropriately leaving food out. I never feed the dogs together. My dogs are always fed in kennels where they're able to um, eat in peace and, and, and calm. If I put Seamus, if Seamus goes into his kennel um, or I put his food in his kennel and I don't shut the door, 
He won't eat. He's just going to sit there and guard. Uh, that's his food. And here's something I say about that, guys. That really is their right. That is a natural instinct. Food means survival. And if you feed them and then let everybody free feed together and maybe one dog comes along and uh, sticks their nose in someone else's bowl, there's a lot of dogs that are very, very passive and will tolerate that. But this is a passive dog right here. For the most part, very little gets him triggered, but food is one of them. And therefore, I just don't set him up for failure. I make sure that he goes in his kennel, the door is closed, then the bedroom door is closed, and he is able to eat in peace. I had to do the same thing with Skye. It just keeps everybody safe. Uh, toys don't seem to be a trigger with my two, but if you have animals that you physically cannot leave them alone, one's really, really possessive of toys, please guys never leave them alone with a toy. Uh, when it comes to your own dogs, you should always, I don't care what they have, if you have a dog that you're feeding, you should always be able to reach your hand right into their bowl of food while they're eating with no problems. You should be able to take a bone away from them, no problems. Um, it's different, I'm not, you know, when I'm talking about aggression, I'm just, I'm talking about aggression between dogs and what I think is appropriate. Guarding food is very common and appropriate when it comes to another dog. As I said, that is, basically that is the difference between survival and not surviving. So I, I, again, I don't set them up for failure, but when it comes to you being able to take food away from them, that is absolutely unacceptable for them to growl from you. And that'll be a topic from, for another video, is that we will actually discuss how to train a dog um, and how to deal with aggression if it comes to food. Okay guys, this is Dr. Amy. And um, I just wanted to uh, just briefly bring up that topic and show you what can be the results of uh, dominance in the household and leaving them alone and unprotected. I hope everybody has a wonderful day.